You are listening to KC Sports Network, the number one podcast network for today's Kansas City sports fans. With former players from your favorite teams, informed perspectives, and former insiders, this is the place for you. KC Sports Network is proudly presented by M Prize Bank, your partner in Possible. It's the KC Laboratory presented by M Prize Bank. You can drive to a brick and mortar bank location or you can bank from the comfort of your own home. Who you do business with is more important than where they're located. I choose to do business with Emprise, and you should too. They have all the tools to give you a phenomenal banking experience wherever you live. That's Emprise Bank, member FDIC. I want to wish a very happy Thanksgiving to everyone, uh, especially my dear pals here. First, find them on Twitter at Maddie underscore KCSN. Buddy, how are we doing? I'm good. Um, I'm thankful that the Chiefs are playing what's left of the Los Angeles Rams this week. Um, it's making what would normally be a very busy week of, you know, just me trying to feel prepared for what I'm about to watch. And it's made it very easy for me um, because, yikes, this uh, this team the Chiefs are about to play. Craig, like, do you think that you could walk onto the Rams offense today and get a spot? No. No, no, because I'd break in half as soon as I set foot on the field. But you fit right no. in. <laughs> yeah, I would fit right in right now. This this roster for the Rams is as picked over as your turkey was yesterday when you were listening to this. That's a great joke. I'm gonna DNP the rest of this just like the Rams do are. I'm out. <laughs> this uh <laughs> yeah, we're we're gonna probably mix it up just a little bit with the game preview. Kind of a different week just with everything going on. There's some news that's hit, you know. So we'll start there off the top and then we will we will preview. Uh, what is left of the Los Angeles Rams. Uh, but we will start uh, with Clyde Edwards-Alaire has been placed on the injured reserve lift, l- list with a high ankle sprain. We really have not talked much about us uh, on, on this. Um, but yeah, that's a that's kind of a... It's bad news. It sucks. Kind of, it just... I don't know. This Sometimes injuries feel very um, just abrupt out of nowhere. And like obviously there's some that, you know, most of them, but like, I just kind of didn't feel like this was one that was going to, I don't know. I, I, it just, it, it felt, it felt weird to see Clyde Edwards Alaire on the injured reserve, I guess, when I saw it happen. I don't know. I, it, it's a bummer though for the running back rotation and for him. I, it, it sucks for Clyde. I mean, this is every year now he is going to have missed over with four games at minimum mm-hmm. every single season he's been in the NFL. I think that hip injury early on, like I, we remember his rookie year. It wasn't perfect. I don't know if he was necessarily living up to that first round hype, but that was a pretty devastating hip injury he had later in the year. And he yeah. did have some flash. Some of his best play in the NFL came, especially on as a runner, came that rookie season for the Chiefs. That hip injury, I really wonder if that played a role in kind of just hitting his turn with a little, his career with a little bit of a curveball um, right away. So it sucks. He's had to fight through all this stuff. His athletic his athletic profile just may never be the same from the hip injury he suffered as at a running back a position that you can't really afford to have a hip injury pretty much so and then now we're adding ankles feet like you know we're adding a bunch of stuff on top of it now so there's a lot of things there it sucks for him it would have been really nice to see him have a bounce back this year long term for the Chiefs this might be the better thing though because now there is no pressure to put him out there on the field i it sucks to say, but it might be the long-term best thing for the Chiefs. I mean, you you start to think about the way that Andy likes to rotate his running backs, and he doesn't want to bury Clyde. Like, he wants Clyde to get the opportunities. He wants him to go out there and run the ball. Even if he doesn't necessarily believe that he's the hottest hand, he's still going to give him reps. We've seen that in Andy's tenure in Kansas City, that he will rotate guys and give them the opportunity to play their way into it. Now, when you get to January, maybe Andy leans on one guy a little bit more and utilizes him a little bit more. That that makes sense. But during the regular season, we see more rotation. And now you're not going to see as much of that rotation with Clyde in the mix. So Isaiah Pacheco is going to get just as many reps as he was getting before, if not more. Jet McKinnon, the very clear third down back. With Clyde's injury here, now all of a sudden you have paved the way for another guy a third guy to rotate in and right now that looks like ronald jones and if it's going to be ronald jones that guy has been a healthy scratch for every single game this year that's typically 
typically not the type of player that Andy is now all of a sudden going to stick in the lineup and say, hey, go rush the ball 10 times. We're going <laughs> to we're gonna feed you the rock a, a few times, double-digit times. So it does kind of feel like Isaiah Pacheco is going to be the early down back and mostly always going to be the early down back and going to get the lion's share of the work with Jet McKinnon as the third down back. And I think that, by and large, most Chiefs fans are going to look at that and say, you know what, that's probably best for the team right now based on what they've shown so far this season. Going back a little bit to what you said, Maddie, about the athletic profile and something I hadn't thought about. Because I think when we were looking at Clyde edwards Lay, the big concern was, hey, athletic profile, is it going to translate? That's the only question. All these traits show up, and it hasn't really been a problem to this point in his career. And then it was. You know, mm-hmm. athletic profile is not a problem till it is kind of thing. But, man, when it is, <laughs> it's just like it's 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 not. I don't want to say death sentence sounds pretty grim, but like it can it can end a lot of careers uh, if the athletic profile just makes it impossible for all that talent and ability that you've shown as a football player to translate at a, at a level. And I think whether or not it's the injuries you know, that he's sustained to your point that have maybe even further sapped athleticism. The athleticism for, for him just has not translated to the, to the NFL. I mean, it, it, an ability that the, the lack of a, of, of a second gear to really explode and pull away uh, and create explosive runs, um, the burst to, to get, you know, out of the backfield, I don't think has been consistent and what happens after what burst he has. I mean, I think about the Matt Milano play. Now, Matt Milano rules. I mean, he's really, really good. But, like, it just it, – that that play just kind of defined what we've seen out of him, you know, a lot of, of his career. And um, it's it's a bump. Like, there's an outside ch- – like, I, I'm not being doom and gloom. There's an outside chance that was the last time we've seen Cloud Ed- Edwards Alaire in a Chiefs oh, jersey. Like, that it sucks. I mean, sucks. Yeah. we had so much hype for him coming out of college. He was so fun. He was a really fun running back coming out of college. Just yeah. sucks. Yeah. But I think that goes back to the injury too, because I'm with Kent. He's not was never the biggest or the fastest guy. But if you look at Clyde coming out and even early on in the NFL, there was still really good change of direction when he wanted to hit a jump cut and then start to accelerate. It was on a dime. He could do it quickly. And I think you can still see very small flashes of that, but I just don't think it's at the same level. I think his ability to reset his hips, really open them up and then immediately accelerate out of cuts is gone. And here's a guy that he has to do the little movements. These small minor movements have to come out quick for him or he's not going to have the speed to outrun a second-level defender closing. He's not going to have the strength to break through a defensive lineman's arm tackle. So much of his game was predicated on those short area bursts, that quick movement, and I do really wonder if it's just the hip injury that he suffered early you know, as a rookie took some of that away, maybe put a little bit of stiffness through his hips, yeah. and that just shows a little bit. I can't say for certain. It definitely has just – his play at LSU has not translated to the NFL, and it could just simply be a step-up – in competition, the field size, reducing other athletes becoming even better than they are in the SEC, reducing that space. I just wonder if there isn't something there because, I mean, like I said, a hip is pretty important for a running back. Well, and I think about contact balance, too. And, like, that was one of the things that really excited you about him, his ability, his balance through contact. And, like, that doesn't seem to be the same way it was at LSU either. And maybe that has to do with that lower half injury as well. Like, there's there's a lot of things to think about there. And, you know, we may never know, but yeah, there, there could be a little bit, a little bit of that to, to what we're seeing here uh, with Clyde Edwards Lair. It's a bummer. And uh, yeah, I mean, Isaiah Pacheco has had a a bigger role this year already. Now it's, it's locked and loaded, buddy. You, you're going to have to, you're going to have to, you're going to have to carry a, a pretty big load for the next, you know, all the way into January. Uh, And look, here's the other thing. I'll just, I'll throw this out there too, real quick. The other thing that's a little alarming: Jarek McKinnon's not particularly healthy consistently either. That's another thing to pay yeah. attention to too, because his his you know he, his injury you know he he's been questionable at times with injury history, and it uh, recently and it's been like three different things that he's having treatment on. So now the workload on him, like you're hoping to get him to January which is kind of what the Chiefs did last year. I mean, they kind of kept him on ice, kept him on ice, kept him on ice, 
and he was a major factor late in the season. I know he got hurt, but like it just kind of felt like they built up to the most important weeks of the season. He was the best back on the football team. And now you're asking him a year older to kind of, they're going to need him more than maybe they anticipated. So I don't know. It's not the end all be all, but like I just, it's something to kind of, you know, it kind of perks my ears up a little bit here now. And it's, it's something to pay attention to. Clyde was kind of a safety blanket in a mm-hmm. lot of ways, I think for the, the roster construction of that room, because, you know, if I Pacheco flame, you know, flames out, he's not seeing things as cleanly. They can just go to Clyde. Uh, you know, Jarek gets hurt. Clyde can do some of that stuff, you know? So it's, I, I don't know, man, it, it doesn't, I don't feel comfortable having him miss time. But uh, yeah, we're uh, we're gonna take a break real quick. Tucker's gonna talk about Liquid Death, and then Maddie's got a game for us. Hey, sorry to interrupt, but I've got to tell you about our friends at Liquid Death. And by now, you know that those strange tall boys in that bottled water section. There's not actually beer. It's a uh, mountain spring water from the Alps, and it's called Liquid Death. It's a crazy new water brand. Cans look wild. I've got one right here. You know I've already got the severed lime with me. One of my favorite flavors. My favorite flavor, actually, of the Liquid Death. It comes in uh, de- several different flavors if you want the sparkling water, the still water. It's all great. But why is it called Liquid Death? Well, it'll brutally murder your thirst. That's why. And their infinitely recyclable tall boy cans are here to bring death to plastic pollution. I love to see that. They also donate 10% of the profits from every can sold to kill plastic pollution as well. Here's what you got to do. You got to go to liquiddeath.com slash KCSN to use their store locator tool, or you can go uh, find Liquid Death at your Target, Walmart, 7-Eleven, or again, go to liquiddeath.com slash KCSN, find a store locator tool, use that, and that's liquiddeath.com slash KCSN. Let's get back to the show. Welcome back, everybody. We are here with Youthful Regis is returning for this wonderful <laughs> holiday. It is Thanksgiving. It is a wonderful time to give thanks. First, foremost, Kent, what are you thankful for this holiday? I am thankful for my two dear friends, uh, Craig Stout. And I don't know if you've ever met him, Youthful Regis, a guy named Maddie Lane. He's a decent human. He sounds awesome. I bet he would win every game that you guys ever played. <laughs> Craig, what are you thankful for this evening? I'm thankful for my undefeated game streak. That's what I'm thankful for. Ooh, feeling a little cocky today, Magician. Okay, so here we go. This is the game that we are playing. I am going to bring to you guys 10 Thanksgiving side dishes, and you are going to compare them to a Chiefs football player. Five on offense. Five on defense. Andy Reid is the turkey. We know this. We know this from the top. So we're starting at the top. The worst of the worst side dishes, according to an article on NJ.com about the best Thanksgiving foods. Green bean casserole. Kent, who is the green bean casserole of the Kansas City Chiefs? <laughs> um, uh, let's go with Nick Bolton. And Nick Bolton is green bean castle because he kind of has been, if you look on social media recently, he's very polarizing. There's a lot of discord about the range of opinions on him. And I feel like uh, green bean casserole is also one of the more polarizing side dishes uh, in all of, all of Thanksgiving uh, discourse. So I think that's, I think that's, uh, I think that's green bean casserole. Green bean casserole is Mike Dana. You're not eating green bean casserole <laughs> most of the year, but at Thanksgiving, that man shows up, and he shows up big. So oh, wait, green for clarity's sake, are you calling the Chargers Thanksgiving? I listen. <laughs> the shoe fits. Chiefs got to feast, so I mean, if the shoe fits, one point for Craig for a better joke. On to the next one. <laughs> Dinner rolls. Craig, you are up first. You have one defender on the table. Oh, man. I'm going to go. Let's see. uh, Dinner rolls. Man. This one's a tough one. (laughs) Who? Who do you hate? He hates you. (laughs) Yeah, the comeback kid thinks you're terrible. (coughs) Um, Orlando Brown Jr. is dinner rolls. No, make it Joe Tooney is dinner rolls. Just consistent. Uh, everybody likes them. 
does the gets the job done. It's something that you have to have. You got to show up. Maybe it's a little bit overvalued, you know, at the table. People kind of reach for him first, maybe g- command a little bit too much of their plate space for a, a dinner roll there. But it is something that you're always happy you have. You can always lean on it. It's just all reliable. I <laughs> I was going to go with – I was going to go – I was actually going to go Orlando Brown at first. I think I'm going to go uh, with Creed Humphrey. Uh just a steady presence on the plate, uh, a guy that is well regarded, that everybody seems to like, everybody wants on their football team, and a good value. Uh, you know, if if you're picking a side dish to bring, dinner rolls is one of the cheaper options. Creed Humphrey, great value on that interior offensive line. Give me uh, Creed Humphrey for dinner rolls. Why are we doing? Why we didn't bet this? The Craig. magician takes this round by two points because the comeback kid is getting sassy for no reason other than he's taking L's. Craig also won for using cap space analogies during his explanation. Next up on the list, again according to an article on NJ.com, uh, we're skipping that one. Cranberry sauce. Kent, you have one offensive and one defensive player, but who is the cranberry sauce of Thanksgiving side dishes? Um, cranberry sauce is uh, Frank Clark. He's underrated. Uh, he's a valuable addition to any Thanksgiving plate. Uh, he is not for everybody, but I think when you give him a chance, you come to appreciate. When you pay attention to it, you come to appreciate. When you actually try a little cranberry sauce on your plate, you're like, you know what? I kind of like this. I hate this game. Cran- cranberry sauce is Kadarius Tony because you got the rest of your meal on your plate. You're very happy with the rest of your meal. Like the rest of the meal is really working. Then you add a little cranberry sauce on top of everything. And guess what? It just takes it up that another notch. Now you're really excited about your Thanksgiving. So Kadarius Tony's cranberry sauce. You know, the magician deserves that point, but I think I got to call in the mercy rule and uh, give this one to the comeback kid. So the comeback kid, you are on the board. Guys, this game is going to take way too long. I need you guys to be much faster through the explanations. <laughs> Elevator pitch these. Gravy. Go. Craig, gravy. Gravy, uh, Chris Jones, uh, elite all over you and all over your favorite player on the opposition. Gravy is Chris Jones. Gravy's Trent McDuffie because he's a rookie and any production you get out of rookies is all gravy. Plus, he covers anyone better than anybody else on this football team. Yeah, I think Chris Jones is way too good to be gravy, which is just the topping. That is back to Kent. Kent is closing the gap. Now he is only down one because of his awful foul earlier in this game or it would be tied. <laughs> did I lose um, points? I yes, that. you absolutely did for being sassy. You want to keep it up. <laughs> Try me. Macaroni and cheese. Kent, you are up next. Uh, it's uh, Juju Smith-Schuster. Because it's the first name I saw on the roster. <laughs> Craig, you get a point, but who is the answer that you have for this one? Uh, it's um, let's see, it's Ronald Jones because it's filler. He's just filling the roster out. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Sweet potatoes in whatever form you want to take them in. Oh, I feel bad for whoever I select here because sweet potatoes. Not not my thing, unfortunately. Can we can we make it like sweet potato pie? Ronald instead? Jones is off the table. <laughs> can we can we make it sweet potato pie instead of just sweet potatoes? No, pie is Damn. coming later. <laughs> Damn it. Uh man. Uh, d- sweet potatoes. Uh <laughs> shoot. Uh, Luke's I, Niang. Because we haven't seen him yet, and <laughs> and he's not a part of my meal because I, I don't really him? eat. Yeah, he's not, I don't really eat sweet potatoes. So. Sweet potatoes are Cole Christensen because you could not have them at your Thanksgiving n- dinner and you wouldn't even notice that he was on the roster uh, or there. Uh, Cole Christensen's apparently on the Chiefs practice squad. Because you tried to use the practice squad, that is a hard point for the magician, a.k.a. Craig, a.k.a. the Renaissance man. Mashed potatoes. Kent, you are up. You have used three defenders. Travis Kelsey, the perfect side to uh, what I'm assuming will eventually, you know, it's it's it's, it's the perfect side to, to turkey. I'm assuming Patrick LeVon Mahomes is the turkey. And 
and mashed potatoes is the best side. Oh, so if you were paying attention, you would hear that Andy Reid is the turkey, <laughs> and this is dishes. just side dishes. But that's okay, uh, Craig. Who is your choice? <laughs> Clearly not paying attention at all. Look at this man, man. It's Orlando Brown Jr. Because once he gets his hands on you, he just smushes you. Not Trey Smith. Pancakes just just absolutely smashing you, mashing you into the ground. <laughs> Trey Smith is mashed potatoes. Craig, I have to inform you, you have used up all of your offensive picks going forward. You won that point, but you were out of offensive players. Best three, best three coming on defense, baby. <laughs> dessert. Just dessert. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. Wait, it's my turn to go first. Never. <laughs> Losing a point. Craig, you're up. Ah, uh, hell, I don't know. Dessert is, um, <laughs> let's call it, uh, let's call it George Karloftis because everybody likes him. He's pretty good. He's he's new. I'm fine with it. <laughs> George Karloftis. That man has never had a dessert in his life. Uh, he, he's had a few desserts. Dessert is Chiefs legend Jeff Allen for his delicious cookie society cookies. Oh, it doesn't no, right. matter. If he's on the roster or not, I'm catching L's left and right, but it's Jeff Allen. That's a three-point answer for you. You have pulled within even as we are heading into the home stretch. We have two left. Stuffing. Kent, you were up first. Keep in mind, you have used Travis Kelsey. (laughs) Okay. It used to be Derek Nottie for stuffing the interior, but now it's Colin Saunders. Uh, ah. He's been better in the run game than uh, than Derek Nottie has, and uh, I think he's been very good along the interior. He's stuffing plays up, so give me Colin Saunders. It's Nick Bolton for getting in there, filling the gap, reading off of the side, filling the gap, getting stuffing the run, leading the Chiefs in tackles for losses, Nick Bolton. Uh, Craig is getting this point. He is up by one. We are going into the absolute home stretch. This is the final one right here. This is it. Your drink of bourbon that goes with your Thanksgiving meal. Oh, I just get to pick any? Oh, go, go, go Craig. It's a luxurious need. It's elite. It's an elite accompaniment that goes with anything. You can have it operate neat. You can have it operate with in an old fashion. You can put it literally anywhere in the secondary and it will be elite. It will. It is an impact part of your Thanksgiving meal. The Jerry Sneed. I, we got to, it's a bourbon is uh, the bourbon cocktail of choice is Patrick LeVon Mahomes. Cause he's perfect. The end. And Craig takes this one. The magician <laughs> remains undefeated yet again. A round of applause for Craig Stout. Do you want to say a few words to the people as you take home the Chiefs edition of the Thanksgiving Day game with no math involved because the heartbreak kid can't handle it? <laughs> a few words for the people. Thank you, youthful Regis. <laughs> you are welcome. All right, and now a quick word from our sponsor, DraftKings and Tucker. Hey folks, hate to interrupt, but I got to tell you about our friends at DraftKings and NFL Sundays are only getting better. And so are the incredible offers at DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL. Right now, new customers can bet just $5 on any NFL team to win and get $200 in free bets if they do. Check this out. Right now, everyone can earn up to a 100% boost with DraftKings stepped up same game parlays. Go to the DraftKings Sportsbook app. Place the same game parlay and combine multiple bets like which team will win, player props, and point totals. I really love doing the same game parlays. The DraftKings app is the best app out there. You can't get a better experience just user-wise. The deals, everything, it's perfect. And with payouts bigger than ever, DraftKings Sportsbook is my go-to when betting on the NFL. Here's what you got to do. Got to download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use promo code KCSN and place a $5 pregame money line bet to get $200 in free bets if your team wins. Only at DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL with code KCSN. Minimum age and eligibility restrictions apply. See the show notes for details. Now let's get back to the show. There are some teams. Oh, what's on, guys? What did I miss? What happened? Hi, hi Maddie. Oh, oh I, just, I just beat the crap out of Kent in another game. <laughs> oh, did I miss it? 
Yeah. Man, I want to participate in one of these one time. You always seem <laughs> to I miss these. You always seem to miss these. It's so it's so weird how that works. I don't have get we talked it. about the Rams game yet? No, we haven't. No. We're about to. Okay. It's we, you haven't missed anything, buddy. We're about to preview Chiefs Rams. And you know, there there are teams that build their rosters such that it is they're going to load up on as many stars as they possibly can and just fill the roster with whatever else they can find. And the Los Angeles Rams did that all the way to a Super Bowl. Uh, they've always been very aggressive about trying to acquire stars. They don't care about draft picks. They're going to trade all their draft picks um, to try to acquire the Jalen Ramseys of the world, the Matthew Staffords of the world. Um, they have given up a lot of draft capital. They've spent a lot of money. And eventually that that stuff kind of comes to, you know, that, 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 that strategy w- is not a sustainable model. And I think that the learning that, you know, they're, they're, they're taking their lumps this year, but boy, does that ring fit nicely. But when you lose players on that roster to injury, like Cooper cup and Matthew Stafford and the guy you tried to start at left tackle, Joseph note, boom. And you know, they, they've lost some players. They've lost a lot of players on the offensive line. They're not a healthy football team right now. And, that makes this season a mess for them. Uh, Jordan might need to put earmuffs on. But we are looking at a game now where w- with all these things, with everything going on in this football team, there's a decent chance, Matthew, that we don't see Matthew Stafford. Yeah, I mean, Matthew Stafford's not playing. I think it's pretty much confirmed at this point in time, right? Uh, he's not playing. You mentioned Joseph Noteboom. I don't think Cooper Cup is playing. They just recently got Van Jefferson back from being injured early in the season. I think some other guys along their offensive line, David Edwards, Alaric Jackson, I don't know if they're starting, but I think they were at least in preseason competing for starting gigs. They're out. Like This offense is entirely pieced together, and they just waived their leading rusher and Daryl Henderson. <laughs> or one of their leading rushers in Daryl Henderson. And the other running back they have, Cam Akers, was like all but out the door at the trade <laughs> deadline. Like this team right now is in a rough spot. Like I I don't know what the offensive line is. You can't. I don't think you can look at a depth chart or snap counts and figure out what their offensive line is doing. At quarterback, I believe right now, they haven't, have they named a starter or is it just going to be Bryce Perkins? Is Bryce Perkins I- starting? It, it, Bryce Perkins is rumored to be getting first team reps, but uh, John Wofford has been limited in practice, so he's also getting some reps. Either way, and they not just good. signed Case Cookus. Yeah. So, um, Case Cookus. There's Case Cookus. There's names. These are names. We are saying names of guys <laughs> that potentially play quarterback at, at a professional level. Um, so yeah, like I, this is why the game preview this week, that and the holidays, is being a little bit wonky. It's really hard to pin down what the Rams are one going to do schematically. Two, who's going to play football for them on the offensive side? So, like, I guess I'll just position it this way, Craig. Can the Rams offense do anything against the Chiefs defense? Or should they be able to do anything against the Chiefs defense of note? I mean, they'll be able to get something going a little bit here and there because Sean McVay is a good enough offensive coach to get some things going. But, like, you're missing, potentially missing Allen Robinson, both the guys that could take center reps for you are potentially missing and you're starting a backup quarterback. Like there's a whole bunch of issues with the exchange and Oh, guess what? The best interior defensive tackle is lining up across from you in Chris Jones, best interior defensive tackle this year is lining up across from you in Chris Jones. That's a problem on the interior. That's going to wreck so much of what the Rams can do. So there's going to be a lot of, of struggles on this side of the ball. There's not a receiver that really terrifies you as a Chiefs fan. I mean, you can pretty much play, you know, some man coverage and know that you can leave some of your corners on a little bit of an island, depending on who's out there. Tutu Atwell still fast, but depending on who's out there, you can leave guys in man coverage and be able to rush blitz, you know, try and pressure a young quarterback into mistakes and they're going to make them. And so this is going to be one that I'm not going to be surprised if maybe they come out a little bit of the gate. Sean McVay's got a good game plan. They move the ball a little bit against the Chiefs defense, but Steve Spagnuolo, when he decides, okay, that's the thing that they're doing, I expect them to not be able to do anything 
against this Chiefs defense. I expect it's going to be locked down. I expect the Chiefs to get a lot of sacks as this Rams offense is going to be trying to throw the ball to keep up. It's going to be bad at the end of the game. I truly believe that. So <clears throat> the only thing that I could really foresee, you know, the Rams being able to move the ball relatively effectively is Bryce Perkins is a good athlete. He's a good athlete for the position. He's a guy that could run the ball and he ran the ball with success at the collegiate level. I actually don't think consistently, like I, I think if there's a model for how this team is going to win, I think Bryce Perkins legs are involved in some capacity um, because I, when I coming out of college, very sporadic as a pat, like the ball placement was very sporadic as a pass, as a passer when he was, when he was in college, um, you know, you're hoping to hit a few shots down the field. You know, you're hoping to to throw up a, a fade ball to Allen Robinson and and you know catch a ball outside the numbers. You know, or two a couple big shots down the field. And Bryce Perkins is getting involved in a little uh, in, in some capacity with his legs. Like I think that's the formula for how that they could potentially move the football. Um, I'm not <laughs> overly confident that they're going to be able to, but. Perkins does have some ability to move around a little bit. Um, you know, you could do a little bit of design run. He's a bigger, he's a bigger guy. I mean, he's like a 6'4, 220 ish type, type, type guy. So you can, you could, you could run the ball with him a little bit if you wanted as well. So I think there's some stuff you could look at there. Here's some just fun stats since their bye week. Um, so we're looking at, you know, week eight on the uh, Rams have not thrown for over 200 yards in a Oof. single football game. Um, they have only rushed for over a hundred yards in one game. And that was their most recent game against the new Orleans saints. Wow. That was the only time they have topped a hundred rushing yards since their bye week on their last three games. Their third down conversion rate is what is this fifth worst in the NFL at 30% only better than the Houston Texans, Denver Broncos, Indianapolis Colts, and new Orleans saints. That's some bad offenses and to make it worse on the year. So not just recently on the year, their third down conversion rate, is only 33% on the road. Hey, they're not playing at home right now, and they're on a terrible downward spiral in terms of this. Like, If there's one way to say that the Chiefs defense can 100% stop the Rams offense from doing anything, win first down. You win yeah. first down versus the Sean McVay team. And like it's, It sounds, you know, any down getting zero yards matters, but if there was every time, if this Rams team is going to get into second and third and long, they are not going to have success against the Chiefs defense. This offensive line won't be able to hold up to the Chiefs pass rush that just gets better as the game goes on. I don't think this receiving group is going to find many open areas versus the Chiefs secondary. And if they do, can Bryce Perkins pick apart zone coverage? Nothing he did in college says he can. So is he going to be able to at the NFL level? Like, and to Ken's point, yeah, he's a good athlete. Maybe dialing up some runs, letting him get out and scramble. You know what's you know helps playing that zone coverage, especially the Chiefs' lovely static two zone. This is kind of a game where you might not have to deviate much. So like I just, as long as the Chiefs don't get beat over the head on first down with play action again, like they did to start that Chargers game, I really don't see the Rams' offense being able to get a whole lot going in this one. It's worth noting that on first downs, the Chiefs. This backs up what Maddie was saying. Chiefs on the season are giving up 5.7 yards per play for the season. That is ungood. I don't know how that compares to the rest of the league, but that's what I've got for my charting. So they, they absolutely have to be better than that. But on top of all that, there's nobody in the backfield that really threatens you as a runner outside of Bryce Perkins, potentially if he's playing, you're not scared of Cam Akers. You're not scared of their running back core. You're not scared of their offensive line really playing superior over the likes of Chris Jones or even Colin Saunders or Derek Naughty or the defensive ends that can set the edge. And Nick Bolton is playing a hell of a lot better over the last three weeks. And so is Willie Gay Jr. Like the Chiefs can probably sit with, you know, a light box and still be able to stop the run pretty well. They're actually better stopping the run out of their nickel than they are out of their base. So stay in nickel, stop the run on early downs, and then, yeah, let them tee off because this offensive line is not going to be able to protect the quarterback for very long. It's going to have to be quick things, quick outs. If you went on first down, just you know, force them to throw shallow throws. throws force them to show, throw bubbles check downs, everything like that, and just live to fight another day, get off the field, give the ball back to Patrick Holmes. 
So I pulled the draft guide report because he got a write up uh, in the 2020 draft guide. Bryce Perkins did. Uh, I, it was basically, hey, look, he threw some, he had some really nice splash throws, but everything else in between was very inconsistent. Some of the worst mechanics of the entire class, but dynamic athlete that made some plays and had some creativity to him. So there's a little bit of, you know, and I do remember some, there were some throws. I think there's actually a couple in the red zone that he actually made that were pretty impressive. If I'm remembering some of the, some of the film he watched on like really high level red zone throws, but like just a lot in between, that was just like all over the place, just kind of just sporadic. And yeah, so there's some potential to maybe try to make a few splash throws here or there, but I just don't know if he's going to be able to put it all to co together consistently because he never really has. Uh, even back in the day, he was a lot of tools. Uh, when 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 he was drafted back, or we, I mean, he think he wound up got getting drafted. I think he wound up in that drafted free agent, if I remember correctly. So, um, <clears throat> but yeah, that's 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 a little bit of the the, the scouting report on on Bryce Perkins in that offense. Okay, probably need to talk about the Chiefs' offense versus the defense because like the defense is it full strength, but they've got a guy that you might have heard of in the middle of the interior named Aaron Donald that's still pretty good at football, Maddie. Well, yeah, the the Rams defense is still good. Like the Rams defense it's not it's not amazing. They're not shutting down people. I think a part of that is the way you started off this conversation about how they've built it. It's all about the two stars and then filling in around them and they're filling in around them has just been not as good this year and that impacts what Jalen Ramsey and then Aaron Donald are able to do. Still great players, but they are not able to play at their absolute best because they're having to cover for so many other subpar players this year. That being said, the Rams still have a top 10 in just about every metric top five and most rushing defense. Like they're a good run defense. Not that that matters playing the chiefs really, but they're a good run defense. They're a middle of the pack pass defense. They have Aaron Donald who can take over any game imaginable. You know, Leonard Floyd isn't exceptional, but he's a decent complimentary rusher. Um, so they, they, they can do stuff on defense. The Chiefs offense versus the Rams defense is going to be, I don't want to say a chess match, but it's going to be a lot closer than I see the other side of the ball. And I wonder if the Chiefs don't come out and kind of play it close to the vest, try to play it safe, knowing that they probably don't have to score 30 points to win this game. I mean, a solid 17 to 20 might very well get them out of this game alive. So I do wonder if it kind of looks ugly as the Rams defense still has, you know, there's plenty to play for for them. They still are talented, but the Chiefs offense just knows they don't have to put up a ton of points to win this one. When you have game breakers on defense, it is hard to really look at it and say, oh, here's what you can do to avoid this. Here's what you can do to try and mitigate this guy because you can't. Like Jalen Ramsey and Aaron Donald are those kinds of guys. They are game breakers on defense. You don't want to throw at Jalen Ramsey very often if you can avoid it. You don't want to drop back in the pass, drop back in the pocket, and you know, as you're passing the ball and just sit there forever because Aaron Donald will make you pay for it. So that does give them a fighting chance in literally any matchup. Doesn't matter how bad the offense is, and it is bad. It <laughs> does not matter. But that's part of this. Because the offense is so bad, teams get so many opportunities to take shots at this Rams defense that eventually they find a crease. Eventually, they're able to get back down the field and they're able to get into the end zone or kick field goals. And frankly, that's all it's going to take for this. Now, that being said, Aaron Donald can almost single-handedly ruin a comeback. I think everybody remembers Patrick Mahomes' first year as a starter You know, against the Los Angeles Rams. Comes out, he's absolutely torching the Rams. What was the difference in that game? about three plays that Aaron Donald made fumbles that he forced sacks that he came up with. And it didn't matter. The chiefs were able to still score, but it was those plays that made the difference. He is just that good. And I know that's not groundbreaking. He's been the best defensive player in the league for the past, however long and maybe ever. So uh, it, it, but it is, it is one of those that you look at and you say it's hard. It's easy to kind of overlook this team a little bit because they're about middle of the pack and points allowed. And that's certainly not what they've been in the past. But it is also one of those that you look at the organization of the defense and you say, hey, that guy could take over a game. That guy could take over a game. Even Bobby Wagner, maybe if he's having a good day, could take over the game. Linebackers can't. Chiefs defense. I, yeah, well, I mean, maybe, maybe it could. But I mean, it. It's one of those that you look at that and you say, hey, listen, the offense still has to be on their A game because if they're not, 
this is one of those that could end up as like a six to three game. God forbid with Patrick Mahomes at quarterback, but a game that could be ruined by some really top tier defensive players. Interesting nugget from Bill Barnwell from a couple of days ago. The Rams have a superstar cornerback in Jalen Ramsey and rank last in the league in quarterback rating while playing man coverage this season. Yikes. The rest are terrible. And exactly. Ramsey has been beaten. Ramsey has not been the same level of player this year as he has been uh, in, in the past. So, or he, in previous years. And I think a lot of it's usage, but yeah, that's, that is true. Having a mask for a lot these days. Uh, so yeah, I may not see a ton of man coverage either. <laughs> Especially look, Ju- J- Jalen Ra- or Juju Smith Schuster back. Uh, that, that's all, that all helps. It's all, it's all helpful. I mean, the chiefs are getting a little bit healthier, probably not going to see Kadarius Tony, unfortunately. Um, but, oh, well, we'll just have to get a little bit more sky more involved, uh, this week as well. So, uh, anything else, anything big to cover about the, the Rams that we missed, or should we go to predictions? I think the two, two quick things, Joe Tooney, hopefully he plays, especially against Aaron Donald. That could be, that could be one thing that really does slow this down. Like if you want to give the Rams a, you know, a chance to smell a little bit of blood is have Joe Tooney be injured. He didn't practice on Wednesday. No idea if it's just a veteran rest kind of thing. Maybe he's, you know, a little beat up, but in in no danger of missing time. I think we'll find out more by the time you're listening to this probably. And then um, the chiefs have the Bengals coming up after this game, right? I wonder going into this game when you see it on the schedule, the Chiefs are really good for like these you know, kind of revenge games. The Buccaneers, teams that they feel like have slightly slided them just based on the performance on the field. They seem to put their best foot forward. They really want to get them back. I was wondering, because the last time they played the Rams was that super high scoring game, if they would just want to prove like, haha, we're still the better offense. Check us out. But with the Bengals coming up next, you want to tell me there's a single game that the Chiefs care about this year more than any of the others? I can guarantee you it's that Bengals game. So I don't think you're going to see the Chiefs do a whole lot of creative stuff. I think they're going to try to skirt out this game with showing the least amount on film, winning this game as just easily as possible, as fast as possible. This might be their goal to have the shortest game of the year for them in this one, to be honest. And the way that you can do that is by kind of attacking the middle of the field with Travis Kelsey. Yeah, Bobby Wagner's out there. Ernest Jones had a really good Super Bowl, has not played that well this season. And you don't trust any of those safeties to really drop back and cover Travis Kelsey. Taylor Rapp is not coming into this game and eliminating Travis Kelsey at all. And I realize that this has been the Travis Kelsey show. And the really easy thing to do is for defenses to just line up and say, hey, We're going to double that guy. We're going to make sure he doesn't beat us. But you know what? A lot of way better defenses in the middle of the field have tried to do that against Travis Kelsey, and he's having the best year of his career. I don't even know if they have the guys to double him. Yeah, I don't know that they do either. (laughs) So, yeah, it's I can see this offense just really funneling through Travis, funneling through Juju Smith-Schuster in the middle of the field and just driving the length of the field in the first couple of drives. And then Andy, like Matty said, Maybe takes his foot off the gas a little bit and coasts home in a game that's a little closer than we want. We'll get to predictions here in a second. If they get out to any kind of lead, they could try to throw some ten, like some stuff to just make those make the Bengals have to think a little bit harder this week. So, you know, just throw some stuff that you're probably not going to show the rest of the year that you don't really have a, you know, that that this is the week to try to throw Patrick Mahomes on a wheel route. Um, Please please do not. No, they're not going to. Never again. Guess what? They Travis never, will overthrow him. They'll never. They should never do it again. I remember when they did. I was like, okay, sure. So that game wound up getting it. that game wound up getting close too. I think it was like it was like the Jets or something. I think the trick so. is to make sure someone's chasing Mahomes so he runs faster, right? Mm-hmm. Like if they did, if you just ensure that someone's chasing him, he'll run faster. So that way you can't overthrow him. Why don't you predict the game, Matt? Okay. Um, 24 to 13. Um, I, I, you know, I think I have the Chiefs scoring a few more points than I was kind of talking about. I, I really think they're just more talented. I think this Rams team is ripe to just lay down for the rest of the year. I really do. The, look at the moves they're making. They got rid of Justin Hollins, a linebacker that has played every single game, like played real snaps every single game for them. They got rid of their second leading rush. Like, I think they're kind of calling it. I think the first half might be a little sloppier than we want. I don't think the Chiefs will be putting a lot out there. So the 24 points won't feel great as a fan. But, I mean, I think they win comfortably. It just doesn't look good. 
Yeah, I, it, I'm going along those similar sort of lines. I got the Chiefs winning this one 21 to 10. I just don't I don't think the Rams offense is going to do enough to really be scary. And I, I honestly a 21 to 10 game. I think that touchdown might come late for the Rams when the Chiefs have some backups in there. I just don't think a whole lot of pretty offense will be played by either side. But the difference is when the Chiefs don't play pretty offense, they're still really, a really effective. They'll be saving stuff for the Bengals. It's going to be a slog. It's just going to be a. Uh, it's going to be one of the ugliest football games you watch all year. Um, I think the opening script is going to be pretty important for the Chiefs uh, defensively because I could see Sean McVay doing enough to to find some points early in the game potentially. Um, so an early game script could be pretty important here just to kill all hope <laughs> and then but i i just i think it's gonna be an ugly football game i'm i'm going 20 to 7 uh i think that i mean right now i think the line's 15 and a half yeah. if it was closer i mean i honestly I, I i could see the game being closer than than 20 to 7 Did honestly. we all pick the rams to cover then yeah. yeah 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 it does the chiefs like it's just the chiefs don't blow teams out very often and you're like every contextually like look like just get through this game because you got the Bengals coming like yeah if it wasn't the Bengals next I'd be more willing to say that they might be feeling revengey and they might be trying to get things clicking but I really think there is going to be a very specific goal to not save stuff but not tip the Bengals off to anything that might be coming with the peak current um, state of the Chiefs offense just so you know, Rant Swanson's like definitely coming out next week. Okay. You already knew that. Thanks to Youthful Regis for popping on the show. This has been the KZ Laboratory. We'll catch you later.